Well, in the house of God this morning, amen. Glad to see the, house, the people of God loving the Lord in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, welcome to, to this morning, our Sunday morning service here at PCF Montebello. We want to say to you who are online as well, welcome, welcome. We love you. We're thankful that you're with us today. Uh, we just want to take a moment this morning to, to open up our service the right way. How many know when you, op- when you, you come to the house of God, as a matter of fact, I'm going to reflect on something that I said last service and the service before. We prepare ourselves before we get here so that when we get here, our heart, mind, soul, and strength is completely focused on God, to worship God, to love God, to praise Him, regardless of what's going on, right? Knowing that the Lord is our answer, He's our strength, He's our everything. And the enemy is the one who's always trying to get our focus off of God and on everything else. Well, here's some news. Even if it's important stuff in your life, understand that God deserves and he, I want to say requires, our complete attention. Is anybody ready to praise God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength? Come on, people of God. We're ready to praise his name with everything we got. And so let's go to the Lord. Let's open up in prayer. And let's ask God to have his way. Father, we love you. We thank you. And we pray that this morning you would be glorified. We pray that your name would be lifted up. We pray, Father, that your people would be passionately and and full of zeal and and desire, Lord God, that we, your people, will be filled with praise in our heart for you. Lord God, that our focus and our attention will be on you, not on everything else around us, Lord God. We know that as we are in you, all those things work out for the good to those who love God. But Father, we pray that your, your praises will be lifted up high in this place, Lord God, that we would passionately and zealously Uh, glorify your name. Father, have your way today. Let your word be preached. Let your spirit be felt. But more than just a feeling, Lord God, impact our souls. Lord, do what you desire. Lord, let nothing quench the Holy Spirit. Let nothing, uh, Lord God, let, let nothing grieve the Holy Spirit, but rather, Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, people of God. Let's praise his name together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
cry, its poems will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, its poems will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, its poems will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, bones will sing.
Hallelujah, my King. Come on, people of God, let's praise his name. Thank you, my Jesus. Lord, we praise your name together. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, my King and my God. Great are you, Lord God. Come on, people of God, is he great? Is he your God? Is he our King today? Lord, we praise you, my God. We worship you. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, but I don't want to stop until that t until we can we praise him and we worship him. I don't want to give him a, a, a tired leftover praise. I want to give him praise because he's worthy. He is worthy. Yes, Lord, you are worthy and gracious, God. We rejoice in you, Lord God. We rejoice in you. Oh, my King and my God. We rejoice in your presence, in your mighty name, Lord God. You are awesome. Worthy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm curious. Does anybody know does anybody know what it means to shout unto God with a voice of triumph? Come on, people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Yes, Lord. God, we praise you, God. You are worthy, Lord. You are triumphant, my King. Lord God, greater are you than anything and anyone. You are almighty. Yes. Praises, honor, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord God, I want to praise you with all my heart, with all my soul, with everything, Lord God, that I am. I want to encourage you, people of God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, but I tell you, what becomes most important is not the most important thing to bring our needs to God. It's not the most important thing to bring our request to God as a matter of fact the Bible does tell us he knows what we need before we even ask that doesn't mean don't ask when we talk to God we're in relationship with God we're, we're requesting we're praying we're seeking and we're listening so he's not saying don't ask he's just saying I am so attentive to you I am so aware of you I love you so much that I already know what you need before you ask but you still need to ask. And so this morning, when we go to the Lord, we want to go with the right heart, with a heart that's pleasing to God, <clears throat> a heart that, that is ready to get, come into the presence of God. And that's what I just believe that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be in His presence with great faith, childlike faith, right? Childlike faith. So we're going to go before the Lord, and here's the thing. There's so many things to pray about so many but I'm going to tell you right now the things that are most important to pray about are the things that move God's heart that are pleasing to God and for some of us that might be this this morning that might be Lord my heart is it right with you and I need it to be right with you and so Lord God I just want to bring my heart to you and ask you for forgiveness and ask you to cleanse me for some that might be the case but I can tell you right now nothing will make God smile more for your life than that you might say, oh, that's, I feel ashamed, I feel broken. You know what? If you come to God like you are and ask him for his mercy and grace and forgiveness, nothing makes him smile more because that's what you're saying there is, I believe. I know I need you, Lord, and I believe. And so for some of us, that might be the case. For others, you might have a loved one or, or someone who, who you're praying for that's in a, in a situation that's very difficult. Maybe there's healing that's needed today. We're praying for, for Big Maria. We're praying for her, for healing as she is in the hospital. We're praying for her. We're praying for the, the people in the land of Israel. We're praying for all of those uh, families that lost their, their loved ones, both Israeli uh, uh, and American as well. As we know, there, I think there's 29 now, 29 Americans dead, 14 missing. And we're talking about everyone over there not just the Israelis not just the Americans the Palestinians as well there are innocent people that are dying right now right now but the Bible predicted that in the end times evil would be so bad that this would take place and God's word tells us let us pray so if you know someone who needs to get closer to God there's nothing more important than that yes God will 
uh, provide. God will uh, make a way, open doors, you know, give us finances where we need it, fix our cars, all that stuff. God is able to do all those things, but how important is that in comparison to this reality? Tomorrow's not promised to any of us, to any of us, right? How many of you know that? Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. Before we go before the Lord in prayer, I just want to share with you, we need to be in prayer for uh, all of Sister Adele's family. And that means, you know, Desiree and Mariah and, and uh, the, all the children. Um, as they lost a, a baby, and we, we did a service for them yesterday, a baby that was one day old. One day. Born in August 28th. Went back to the Lord. August 29th. See, no one's promised tomorrow. Not even the innocent. Not even the innocent. And so let's, let's go to God. I mean, let's not bring to him the leftover of the weekend. Oh God, I'm tired. I had a long weekend and so I'm just here. Let's not do that. Let's go to God hungry, passionate, realizing that time is short, realizing that his presence is so important to us. Let's go to the Lord. Lift your needs up. You know someone that needs healing? Pray for them. You need, know someone who needs salvation? Pray for them. Let's pray for the land of Israel. Father, in Jesus' precious name, we come to you. Lord God, with our hearts open and our, uh, Lord God, uh, just a... a just a humbleness. Lord God, we humble ourselves before you. Lord God, we're not ashamed or afraid to admit or to confess, Lord God, that you are all we need. Lord God, that you are everything we need. And Father, that you are the answer, my God, for every circumstance that is taking place in our world today. Every problem, Lord God, that every person faces, every family faces. Lord God, even in the desperate times we live in, the days that what we call the end times. Lord God, we know that you you are still the answer. We still run to you and not from you, Lord. We pray for those who need you to come to you, not away from you. Lord God, we pray, Father, for the most important thing, for salvation for uh, those who are lost. For your word tells us the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Father, we pray today, oh Lord God, for our loved ones, our family members, our friends, our co-workers, our neighbors. Lord God, we pray for our enemies. Lord God, even those who don't like us, Lord, we pray, Father, that you would touch them, save them, bring them to genuine forgiveness. Let them know your love, my God. Let them know who you are, my Lord. And Father, we pray, Lord, we stand together in agreement with, with what the word of God says. Those who bless Israel are blessed. Oh, Lord, God, we pray over Israel, Lord God, and the, all of the people, the innocent people in the Middle East, in the land, Father, Palestinian and Israeli alike. Father, even Americans that are out there. Father, we pray, my God, that you would be with them, help them. Lord God, allow them to know and see and understand the truth even in the midst of this darkness. And Father, help your people to be, Lord, fully aware and ready, Lord God, prepared for all that takes place in these end times that we would not play games, that we would get our home, our house in order. Lord God, that we would get our, Lord, our, our life in order before you, Father. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that your houses would be filled. Lord, that you would bring revival to your people, Lord God, that your people would revive and hunger and thirst, my God. Oh, Father, we pray for all of Adele's family, Lord God, every member of that family, Lord God, for comfort and grace, Lord. God, that they would be drawn to you in this difficult time and they would not run from you. We pray for Mariah and David, Father, that they would just surrender their hearts to you and serve you with all their heart. Father, we lift up and we stand in agreement praying for prodigal sons and daughters, those who once walked with you and have walked away. Father, we pray, draw them back to your loving arms. And Lord, we pray, once again we pray, Lord, let the signs of the times bring revival to our hearts, that we would take them seriously, and we would not be distracted by all the minuscule things of this life, Lord God, but that we would live for you. And Father, we thank you for saving, for healing, Lord, for setting free, for delivering those in bondage. We thank you in Jesus precious name. And everyone who agrees with that, say it with me. Amen and amen. Come on, people of God. Thank the Lord for your answered prayer. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God.
God. Oh, we love you. We thank you, my Jesus. God, you're worthy, Lord. You are so worthy, Lord. My King and my God, you are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Before we greet a neighbor, I got to ask a question. The prayers you prayed, the things you asked for, the things you brought before the Lord, do you believe that God heard your cry? Do you believe it? Amen. Well, then you will receive. The Bible tells us that believe and you shall receive. Amen. You shall receive. Give the Lord one more hand clap and then greet somebody. <laughs> greet somebody in the love of God. Welcome somebody and then we'll get ourselves ready for the word of God. God bless you. Those of you who are online, we're glad that you're with us. And uh, we want to encourage you to just stay with us for the remainder of the service as we're in the word and in other things. So God bless you. We're thankful that you're here with us on, on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. And recently we've noticed that even on TikTok, uh, we've had many people joining in our services and and uh, even hundreds of you, and we're thankful for that. We're really thankful. God bless you. Amen. All right. Go for it, folks. Greet some people. Let somebody know they're loved and blessed in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My King and my God, you are so good. All right. Thank you, Jesus. It's a good, a good feeling there. I just wanted to say hello to all of you guys. Be blessed. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, James. Good to see you, James. <laughs> I pointed at both of you. Uh, amen. Uh, even with that interesting logo. <laughs> but you're not alone here. All right. We're going to... Yes, ushers, usherettes, let's bring everybody back together. I do know that P Praise Kids and Set Apart Youth, they know what to do, they always do. And um, sometimes I even forget to let them know, but they do. All right, thank you, Lord. So welcome to, the, to our Sunday morning service. We're going to continue on in the Word of God. And I do want to say it blesses me when I hear and see uh, people of God just loving each other. I want to take a moment to just say hello, welcome back, my sister Cece. You were out for some time, but you're back. Amen. You know, I guess a good way to say it is you can't just stop a, a you can't stop a faithful man or woman of God, right? Can't stop us. We we might get hit, but we get back up and we keep fighting, right? We keep on going, and in the strength of God, we are victorious. So good to see you, Amen. And, and uh, you weren't out as long at all, but we're we're just been praying for Grandma Irene. She's just uh, um, I don't know how to say it. She's like a just a matriarch and a strength in our church, and we're blessed. We're always blessed to see you, sis. Always blessed, Amen. Amen. So what, should I go down the line? Because everybody, we're blessed. We're so thankful, right? We are, but amen. Who knows? Maybe I'll make it a habit to just acknowledge uh, an individual or a family or something each service. We love you all, though. We're thankful for all of you. Every one of you are valuable to the Lord, and you're valuable uh, in our hearts, uh, your family. And we thank you. We thank God for you, brother. Amen. Oh, amen. That was nice. I was, you know, I wasn't asking for it, but Grandma Irene said, she, we love you too. I hope she was talking for some people, right? <laughs> I hope so. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves ready. Did, uh, I always take a, a moment just to thank God for things that happen in our church and things that are happening in between the services. And, and I'm just grateful for a couple of brothers getting together for young adults and ha fellowshipping and having a good time. As long as we're fanning the flame and encouraging one another, uh, in every ministry and looking to build, then it's just a matter of time before we continue to reach more and more and touch lives for the kingdom of God. So amen. Amen to that. It's what a blessing. Well, this morning we're going to get into the word. Of course, we'll end our services with uh, offering time and announcements and, and um, today's an important day. I think every day, you know, uh, in these end times become more and more important. And um, so I, I, I just want to say, as we open, we're going to open up in prayer right now. I just want to say that th there's just such an urgency in the land, such an urgency in the heart of so many. And um, I, I'm, I'm desiring that. I'm encouraging that. I'm praying for that. Lord, let the hearts of God's people be urgent for him. 
Let the heart of God's people be urgent for what God is saying and doing in the days that we live in. Amen. Amen. In the days that we live in. Uh, there's so much going on in our world, but I can tell you that uh, two things happen simultaneously. God wants us to be careful and responsible and faithful in our daily life and our responsibilities. And that, that sometimes can take up so much strength and time. But he also wants us to recognize in those daily responsibilities of life that the most important responsibility is that we are Christians that we are children of God, that we, everywhere we go, shine the light and share the gospel and share the love of God with people, especially in the urgent days we live in. And so I want to encourage you, let the urgency be in there. Uh, yeah, amen. There's nothing wrong with having an urgency and a, and a real concern for the days we live in. We need that. We absolutely need that. Well, all right. Let's open up in prayer and let's get into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Lord, we humble ourselves before you, and before anything else, we ask you to forgive us and cleanse us and wash us. Lord, we really simply are asking that you would prepare us so that we may hear and receive all that you are going to say to us. And Lord, we just ask that our hearts and minds would be ready for the Spirit of the Lord, ready for the Word of God, and and Father, we just take this time to ask that you would help us to, to, and Lord, as your word says, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And Father, we just praise you and ask that, Lord, your word would go deeply into our hearts and that, Lord, your word would come out of us in our, in our actions, in our, in our deeds, in our words, Lord, in, in our thought life, that, Lord, we would... Lord, experience transformation from glory to glory. Lord, that we may honor you and reach people for the kingdom of God. Father, we ask you, be glorified today. And I ask you to anoint your messenger in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if you will, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 is where we're going to start. And um, what we're going to do this morning might be just a little bit different, but I had mentioned to you last service or so that we're going to be experiencing this in services a little bit uh, in the days that we're living in and just a little different in the sense that we really do need to focus on the days that we live in. And I believe just as a, a pastor and a shepherd that it is my responsibility, my duty to share the things that we need to hear front and center of our attention in our daily life. And so... Uh, the, the title of our message is Get Yourself Ready, right? Is that, is that what I told you, Graham? <laughs> There's so many ways I want to express this. Get yourself ready. Prepare yourself. We have that responsibility to prepare ourselves. God has given to us what we need to do so. God has made us aware of what's coming. And he does that for a reason, so that we will use what God has given to us to be prepared for whatever takes place in our world. It breaks my heart when I, you know, the, the need and the passion inside of my heart, the desire to share the urgency of the day. It really does break my heart because it, uh, it's so severe. And the Bible tells us that in the end times, many are going to sort of be just kind of moving along, just sort of doing whatever they do, getting, you know, just, just living life, if you will. Just kind of handling business and living life. And slowly but surely, the, just that, that, that lulling to sleep, that that, that deception that the enemy brings, he, he just continues to bring it so that God's people, because that's he, we're the target, of course, and the enemy targets God's people because we win souls. So he desires to do everything to distract and deceive so that we are not impacted by the truth that is coming to pass before our very eyes. Let me say that again. The enemy wants to keep us 
from being impacted by the truth that is coming to pass before our very eyes. The things that the Bible predicts, the things that the Bible talks about are taking place in our very day, in the days that we live in. If you look back maybe 100 years, if we lived 100 years ago, we would still be uh, preaching and teaching and sharing God's word with sort of a, an anticipation of what we think, uh, what our interpretation, what we think is coming to pass. But today, all you have to do is look at the, the days that we live in and the signs of the times. It's no longer something that's going to happen. It's no longer something that one day, maybe not in my lifetime, I'll probably be in heaven before any, no, it's happening now. We're seeing the beginning stages of the end times. And folks, I wanna encourage you. And I'm gonna be careful here when I encourage you with this. We live in a, in a, in a strong day of deception. So I wanna encourage you to keep an eye on the news, but I wanna encourage you to be careful with the news. Be very careful with the news. Local news, news just here and there, mainstream media news is dangerous, is dangerous. And I say that carefully because, you know, first of all, there's not enough time in the day to report everything. And so everything doesn't get reported. And when it does get reported, it doesn't always get reported in, in a truthful way, but with an intention. And so here's the, the blessing we have. We have the choice to decide what we watch and what we listen to. So I would encourage you, pray about it. Seriously pray before you just pop on the local news or before you go, just go to that, your, whatever the, uh, the news that pops up on your, your device that, that just uh, through algorithm, it just, it thinks you want to see this. And so it puts something in front of you that it thinks you want to hear. I would challenge you to pray and seek the Lord because there are a, there's a lot of deception going on in our world today. And I, I say all of this before we get into the word because God's word is clear. God wants us to be ready to prepare ourselves, to not be uh, deceived with the enemy's devices, to not be ignorant of the enemy's devices, but be fully aware of the days we live in so that we are not distracted. Because I can tell you right now, and I'm going to give you an example, then we're going to get into the word. Let's just say you're out there in the streets. This could possibly happen in our day. Nowadays, you see this all the time where people are get, just randomly getting attacked. How many of you have heard of, of a lot of stuff that are take, is taking place today, right? Randomly getting attacked. It's the other day I was sitting in, a, in my car waiting, uh, just waiting uh, I won't tell you what I'm waiting for. I was just waiting and I saw, I, I saw some people walking towards me and I thought to myself, you know, we're living in a time where it doesn't matter what they look like uh, or what I might think they are or what I might think, who they might be. You never know anymore. You don't know. And so you can just randomly get attacked. So think about it. Imagine you're, you're just going through life and, and you're just doing uh, your daily things and then somebody just out of nowhere attacks you and you're not ready for it. That's the worst possible position to be in, to not be ready. That's where the most impact of that attack comes. And so that's what we're talking about today, the urgency and to be ready, uh, ready uh, in the days that we live in as people of God. And so Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 16, I want to read, I got, I, I literally have my Bible open to the book of Ezekiel right now. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Matthew chapter 16, I'm going to read from verse 1. I want you to listen to what the Word of God says. The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. Jesus replied, when evening comes, you say it'll be fair weather. Oh, chapter 16, verse 1. Start from, sorry about that. Uh, I, f I forgot to tell you the verse. Amen. All right, let's do that again. So Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, today, 
It will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the time. A wicked and an adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign. But none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. The Bible tells us in the book of James, I believe, it tells us that in the last days, and, and if I'm wrong, we can look it up later, uh, but it's either James or one of the letters of Peter, uh, of Peter, first or second Peter. The Bible tells us in the last days there will be many who will be making these excuses. And the excuse will sound something like this. Oh, we've been hearing about the prediction of the end of the world forever. It's never going to happen. It's always going to be the way it's always been. The Bible literally predicts that people will be saying that in the days we live in. And it's sad because now in the days we live in, we're hearing that more and more. Are you really sure the Bible's true? Are you really sure it really is? Because it just seems like nothing's changing. It just seems like it's, yeah, it's getting worse, but it's just, it's always been like this. There's always been wars. There's always been, uh, uh, you know, pestilence or disease. There's always been the, the signs of, uh, in, the, in the skies and signs in the, in, in the earth, you know, with, with uh, earthquakes and storms and such. And so the Bible predicts that in the end times, that excuse is going to come out more and more and more than ever. Amen. Thank you, Jace. Yeah, Second Peter. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. All things are the same. This is the end times excuses that people are making. And so as we read Matthew chapter 16, this is what we're seeing. Jesus talking to the Pharisees, he said to them, you, you know, in, in your life and in your experience in life, you have the ability to look at the weather and kind of predict how the weather's going to be. You know, you can look up in the sky and he goes, oh, it's, the sky's red and it's forecast. It's going to be stormy or, or overcast. It's going to be stormy. You have the ability with your natural eye to look around and kind of get an idea of what's taking place. You know, all of us tend to have a little bit of what, it, what we call, what the Bible calls worldly wisdom. How many know what worldly wisdom is? It's when you know some things from, you know, from growing up, you've learned, you've bumped your head a few times, right? You know what it is to, uh, this is wrong or this is right. So we have some wisdom and so we can look around and we can see uh, this and we can see that. But here's what Jesus is telling them. You have this ability, yet you really cannot see. You really do not uh, interpret. You can't discern the signs of the time. Is anybody listening this morning? He says, you can't discern. You don't have, you're spiritually dead. And because you're spiritually dead, and he's talking to the Pharisees. And keep in mind, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, the religious people of that day. By the way, they happen to be the people that at their hand, Jesus was uh, crucified. So they, thinking they were doing God a, a favor, thinking they were doing God a service, they they were the instruments used to kill our Lord and Savior. Good news is he rose from the dead. Good, uh, even better news is this. It was really not just the Pharisees and definitely the enemy was involved, but it was our sin that put Jesus on the cross. That's good news because if, if my sin was on the cross, that means Jesus died for my sins and he died for your sins. And so our sin put him on the cross and Jesus died, shed his blood and he rose from the dead and he defeated death, hell and the grave. So good news is the enemy couldn't stop him. Pharisees couldn't do anything even though they were the religious people of that day. They could not stop the Lord. But here's what Jesus was telling them. You, even in all your religiousness and all of your worldly wisdom, you can see the signs of, uh, of things sort of carnally and, and just uh, around you, but you can't, you don't, you cannot discern the signs of the times. And then he says a wicked and an adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign, asks for one, but none shall be given it. 
except the sign of Jonah. And what he was talking about there was the resurrection of Jesus. That Jesus would be put in the grave, but three days later he would arise and, and many eyes will see him and they will know he is resurrected, that he defeated death, hell, and the grave and that you and I have salvation and salvation is in no one else but Jesus, the Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so the sign of Jonah... So he tells these Pharisees, none will be given, no sign will be given to you except that one. I start here because there's something important we need to understand. Something very, very important. We talked about it a little bit, uh, what was it, last service. It wasn't uh, the, the, the Wednesday with Nehemiah, but I think it might have been last Sunday. We talked about how does anybody remember, anybody remember when Jesus fed the, you know, the 4,000 and the 5,000 and then they took up all the baskets and then they got in the boat and then they went across and, and Jesus told them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. You guys, guys kind of remember that? It's, it's a proven fact that it usually takes within 72 hours for people to completely forget whatever it was that they learned at, in church. I don't know if you've heard that before, but it's true. It's true. If I ever did a quiz and asked you what, what was the last service, most of us would reach for our phones and look at YouTube real quick and say, what did he preach? What did he preach? You know, because our, our minds are made up like that. So our spirit has to catch it. Our spirit, and, it re, and the Holy Spirit brings back to our remembrance what we need. So you guys remember we talked about, and, and, about that and how the disciples started saying, oh man, he's telling us that because we, uh, we didn't bring any bread. We forgot to bring bre- bread. And Jesus said to them, are you still not understanding? Do you still not see? Do you still have hardened hearts? Well, We don't have the time today, but I want to challenge every child of God, every true believer online and in-house, do a study, go into the Bible and look for every passage of scripture where Jesus had this kind of conversation, whether it be with the Pharisees or his disciples themselves, when he told them, how long do I have to be with you? How long will I tarry with you and be patient with you? When will you come to a place where you will awaken and learn? Jesus had that conversation a lot. They experienced that conversation a lot. And it didn't just happen because Jesus said something and wanted them to remember. It wasn't like a test. Jesus would do miracles. I mean, he'd open blind eyes. He'd feed, feed thousands, right? He, would, he even gave them power to go and pray for the sick and to cast out demons. And even after that, they were still struggling to understand. Is anybody listening? So you got to ask this question, why that kind of conversation? Why was that possible? How could it be that God's people, the disciples could walk in power, cast out demons, lay hands on the sick? I mean, dead raising uh, to life and, uh, you know, demoniacs being delivered and, and, and all this amazing stuff. Remember when he sent them out two by two and he gave them power, even after being used by God, still struggled to understand how is this possible I'll tell you what I get out of that is I think the Lord the whole time he had a lot to teach his disciples how many of you call yourself a disciple amen don't be ashamed to call yourself don't say oh because I don't know enough I'm not a disciple you, that's not what you can be a little little teeny kid that no, no, don't know anything but you believe in Jesus you are now a disciple amen, amen. never be ashamed always be proud that's right I'm a disciple of the Lord absolutely <clears throat> excuse me there's a lot that we are to learn a lot the disciples needed to learn in a short period of time a real short period of time. But what I would like to just kind of draw out of that today is this. Just like the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 16, they were not able to discern the signs of the times. And it appears to me that as Jesus was teaching his disciples, he was teaching them so that they would come to a place where their eyes would be open to see in the spirit. 
that they would understand the things of God, that they would get their eyes out of this just local, in front of your face, basic stuff that we just, with worldly wisdom, discern. We just kind of walk around going, okay, I don't, oh man, bank account's a little low. Uh, I guess I'm not gonna be able to pay that bill this week. And you know, we're just right there. Could it be that, the, uh, as an example, the Lord's saying, hey, that, that may be true as you look at the bank account, but did you forget who your provider is? Did you forget that I'm able to bring something out of nothing? Or did you forget that I'm able to open a door that no man can open and I can shut the doors that the enemy's trying to open that no man can shut, no demon? You understand? So we're so, we can be so stuck in the, the realm that we're in that we don't see or discern the signs of the times. And so it just seems to me like the whole time Jesus is like, look, you keep, for, you're not, hearing me you're not understanding i demonstrate for you a different realm the supernatural you are part of the kingdom your kingdom people you're children of god you're not just these normal people kind of like a bunch of zombies walking around in in the world just living life no you are called for greater you're children of god and you are meant to hear my voice. You're meant to know my will. You're meant to live for me. And even when everything around you appears to be something, uh, you know, just something that just might be discouraging or di difficult to deal with, recognize that you are a child of the king. You are a child of God. And so your mind and your heart needs to be renewed so that you may understand the days we live in, the signs of the times. And so this constant conversation, how long will I be with you? How long will I endure with you? I just get the sense that one of the major things is Jesus was preparing them for the big picture. Opening their, their eyes to the kingdom of God. Not just the, the, you know, the current day that they were in, the current experiences they were experiencing. Now, what I'd like to do for time sake is I wanna bring that to today, to us. Let's bring that to us now. And let's talk about that a little bit. Because I believe with all my heart that the signs of the times are everywhere and I do believe that God's people, his remnant, I believe those who love him, who, who are passionately seeking him, are aware of the signs of the times and experience urgency, experience a sense of, uh, of, of zeal and passion. And, and again, I use the word urgency because I can't think of another word that fits. That, that urgency, that, that time it, you know, time is not necessarily on our side. We don't have all the time in the world. We only have the time that God gives us to do what God's called us to do. And so I just believe that God is awakening his people, continuing to, just like with the disciples, he, he's saying to us, how long must I tarry with you? How long must I, I work with you until you open your eyes and look around and say, wait a minute, what am I doing? I'm, I'm walking around like a zombie, just engaging in the temporal, engaging in all the stuff that just you know it's just gonna be here it's just gonna go away and it's a new problem's gonna come uh, how long are we going to live that way I, I just believe the lord is saying to us open your look up and open your eyes the signs of the times are everywhere and i grant those who desire to see it those who want to see it will see it not just see it discern it that's the point discern it it's so hard to discern when we're not spiritually awake. Now, I believe God's people are alive in Christ. We're saved, we're forgiven, we're washed in the precious blood, and we are awake. But even God's people, according to the end, uh, according to the word of God in end times, even God's people will just be distracted and pulled away and their attention will be on everything that's just second or not as important or things that would be time wasters and energy wasters and, and, and uh, strength wasters and, and uh, substance wasters, all the stuff that God gives to us to live with, just wasting away the end times. Many will be so distracted. And so I believe God is saying, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. And there's only one real way to do that. And that is not 
to go get a cabin up in the mountains somewhere and stock up all this food, canned goods, and all, well, maybe it is for some people, I don't know, but to, to go out there and, and, and live off the grid and cut off your cell phone because Big Brother's watching you. And some of you are looking at me like, what is he talking about? Never mind, let's just keep going. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, just, just you know, go, buy, go buy some, you know, some supplies, maybe some military gear, and then be ready for the war. What we're talking about, what I believe the Word of God is telling us, is God's people chosen for this day, chosen to live in the days we live in, we're going to go through some tribulation. We're going to go through some. We already are. The, it has already started. It has already begun. And so we're going to see some of it. But let me remind you, what does the Bible teach us? The Bible teaches us that we are, we're not ordained for wrath or we were not created to go through the wrath of God. For this morning, I don't have the time to get into uh, the rapture. I do want to talk about that in the weeks to come, and we're going to talk about that. Because the signs that we're looking at and we're talking about are pointing to something. Yes, they're pointing to the end of days and the end of, uh, uh, you know, the end times. But for the believer, it is pointing toward the rapture, pointing towards being ready to go, being ready to be one of those who is caught up to meet him in the air. God is preparing his people. And I can tell you right now, if we're so comfortable on this earth and we live for this earth and we're, all we're worried about is making sure that everything on this earth is good and ready and prepared and it's all investment on what's happening now, then maybe, just maybe, we won't be ready. Remember how I opened up by telling you the, the, the ugly thing that happens today where these people just attack at random? Think about the damage if you're not ready. That person attacks and you're not ready. God wants us to have our sword ready, if you will. Right? Believers in the Lord, you know what I'm talking about, the sword of the word, right? Right? God wants us to have the sword of the word ready to, to do spiritual battle. I'm not talking about like Peter pull out a sword and start hacking people's heads off or trying to. And when the, the attacks come and we're and we're prepared, then we're ready. But I, I did this at, um, at the men's discipleship. <laughs> the men's discipleship, I'm gonna do this again. Some of our swords, some of our sword, that, the, the sword of the word, some of our swords looks like this. That's not much of a sword, is it? It's a little teeny thing. Trust me, it's a letter opener is what it is. It just looks fancy because it goes like that. The attacks come. The truth that is being unveiled to us by the signs of the times, and we're not aware, and all of a sudden we feel this impact of, of some attack, some strategy of the enemy, and we go to pull out our sword, and it looks like that. And we're not ready for battle. Why? Because the enemy has 15 or 20 things to take you out with. Oh, yeah, you're not ready. You're not going to serve the Lord. You're not going to go for it because I got you tied up over here with this so, so unimportant thing. I got you tied up over there, so distracted. Man, you stay up at night just thinking about the, the latest um, whatever you fill in the blank. The latest whatever. So, I just want to communicate, and I'm going to read to you a couple of verses. I want to communicate to you that God wants us to be ready, prepared. And the only way to be ready and prepared is to be spiritually awake to truly be seeking God. Seeking God is not just prayer, although prayer is a huge part of it. 
prayer, I mean, there's so much to that. We'll, we'll be hearing some stuff on that as well because prayer is, is huge. It's, it, it, it encompasses our relationship with God. But so how, how many know seeking God is also seeking his word? Seeking to know the signs of the times. And so remember how Jesus told the Pharisees, you have the ability to see, but you can't see the more important things. For the disciples, you're my followers, but you just are struggling to see the important things because you're still here. And so the message is the same today. We're struggling to see the big picture because our eyes are everywhere else. Let me ask this question. Where have your eyes been? What has your interest? What's got your attention? What's got you so into it that you, you, you give hours to it? Could it be that those things have little to no value in the big picture, in the kingdom of God? Could it be that the Lord is looking for his people, those who will recognize it and say, no, I, will, I refuse to give my time, talent, treasure, and testimony to these unimportant things. This is the challenge. I want to read for you quickly, because we're running out of time this morning, but I want to read for you just a couple of verses just to remind you of the days we live in. You guys okay? Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me look around and see if you guys are still here. All right. Or has it, has, have you glazed over? You're like, okay. I heard it already. All right. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Let's read that quickly. Jace, can you help me with that? 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 5. Hey, you know what? We've got some new versions of the Bible on screen. Let's go with the NLT. Okay, so we have the New King James. We have the NIV and the NLT working on the, uh, getting the ESV and the one, two, three. Anyway, I'm just kidding about that. But Second uh, Timothy chapter three, verse one through five. Listen to this, guys. Why don't everybody listen to this? Just it, it, it's just us awakening, right? We're not we're not going. Oh man, Jesus told us to bring bread. Oh, we forgot to bring bread. We're going. Wait a minute. We're with the one who can do all things. Let's get with what he's saying what he's warning us to do. Listen to this. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to parents. Stop right there for a minute. Because you might say, how did that make it in the end time signs? Disobedient to parents. I was disobedient to my parents. You were. Sorry, mom. Right? I mean, how did that make it into an end times list of signs disobedient to parents? Think about it from the spiritual realm, not from the realm of the, just the now. Think about what's going on with our kids, our teens, and with our young adults today. Think about the deceptions they're hearing and the lies that they're taking in from their devices, uh, stuff that, that, that they're taking in and they're believing and in, despite what their parents ever taught them. Nowadays, people are like, I don't care what you say. You know, if I want to go have an abortion be, without you knowing, I'm going to do it. If I want to go and change myself, I'm going to do it without you knowing. Okay, I'm being careful here because we live in a time but think about it. When you think about this, in these last days, in these difficult times, there will be, uh, people will love uh, only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, okay? I mean, every, there's always boasting and pride. But folks, this is talking on a whole different level. The greatest kind of pride is the kind of pride that says, I don't need God. You need God. You're weak. You need, that you need him, and I'm, th I'm happy for you that you found something to help you, but I don't need him. Oh, you know what? I don't even think, I, I think the Bible's not even true, and I think, you know, now everybody's understanding that there's a lot of other stuff. That, that's the greatest kind of pride there is. That's the pride that, uh, that, that uh, people don't make it to heaven for. I don't need God, right? But then it goes on to say, scoffing at God and then disobedient to parents, Folks, on a whole different level. I'm going to put a plug in for children's ministry and youth ministry. 
Okay, we, we, need, we definitely need help. We need help. We need to do better. But why? Because the church, the body of Christ across the land, we assist, we help raising children, we help parents, we help families to, to guide the kids in the ways of Christ so that they're getting the Lord from different ways as we bring kids to church. We're teaching them the ways of God and, and trying to help them understand the Lord all the way up to when they get to youth and hopefully that they're, they're aware of the Lord and, and want God by the time they become young adults. So think about all the churches that are, and trust me, when you look around, you see empty chairs here when they're, you know, sometimes we have, you know, services like that and sometimes it's full thankful thankfully but i'm gonna tell you right now uh it's sad churches are emptying out in some places and why because what the kids don't want to go to church anymore and what's the use and people just start going off and living life and doing whatever and the valuable things are no longer valuable right so let's move on because i i can stay on this i want to just challenge you raise your kids in christ and you might say, well, our church doesn't have enough. Well, then what do you say? All of us just put our hands to the plow and say, hey, let me help so our church will have enough. Because it's not about entertaining your kid or mine. It's not about entertaining your grandkids or mine. It's about every child that would come into this place, this, the families that come into this place, that they will receive Christ and we'll do our best to help them receive the Lord. Help them, especially in the days we live in. Or are we still like the disciples where Jesus is saying, are you still thinking about bread? Are you still thinking about how am I going to pay that bill? Or are you aware that I am, that I am, I am God. I am your provider. I am he that is with you. You can't do it on your own. That's, that's evident. But the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's with us. Goes on to say, ungrateful. Un uh, uh, man, that made it on the list. They will consider nothing sacred. In other words, there'll be such disrespect, such disrespect, even the things of God. People will treat Bibles like, like this. It's trash. People will treat... Uh, people in prayer disrespectfully like I don't care you know what you know what we hear on the news a lot this is what we hear on the news a lot nowadays uh, we hear this where people will say you know what when bad things happen spare me and newscasters and people are saying this stuff spare me uh, that our thoughts and prayers are with the people what good has that done well, you're hearing that on the news has anybody heard that recently where where you know uh reporters on the news are saying you know what i'm not even going to say my thoughts and prayers are with anybody because what good is that done that is an absolute disrespect toward the belief in almighty god think about that that is a, a complete disrespect and we're hearing it in the mainstream areas let's go on verse three we're almost done they will be unloving and unforgiving Today, I notice more than ever, people feel so comfortable not forgiving. They're just so comfortable. It's like, I don't, you know, I don't have to. Or they'll say, I know I have to, but. But what? But what? You know we're all going to stand before God on this. So, but what? There is no but. It's simple. But yet, in the end times, so people will be it'll be so easy to be unloving. I don't care about you. I don't care about anything. All I care about is what I'm doing. It's what I got going on right now. Unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. That's a big one. Uh, the more temptation comes into our home through devices and through different ways, the more temptation becomes not just so secretly, but now so out in the open that people are becoming more and more comfortable. And they're like, you know, I don't have to control myself. Instead, I'm going to give in to myself. You know what? I want to be happy. So I'm going to do the things that make me happy. Yeah? Well, I'll tell you right now, there are some things that might make you happy temporarily, but just like a disease, they'll come back to destroy you. All right, but that's the signs of the end times. Have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. Hate what is good. Here's one of the ways we can discern. If you see something that just seems to be going against what we know is good, then we need to be aware that that has been affected by the evils of our day. 
We need to love people and reach people for sure. Even people who do the wrong things, God loves them and he wants us to, to reach them for, uh, with Christ, for Christ, to be forgiven. But understand, when we see the fruit of it, we know where it's coming from. We know where the motivation is. Okay, uh, verse four, and then we'll, verse five. Uh, they, will be, they will betray their friends. And this doesn't have to do with, uh, I'm unfriending you. Okay, this has nothing to do with social media. Okay, right away, oh yeah, see that's a prophecy because you know we got social media now and we're, we're unfriending people. That's not necessarily betraying friends. This is so much greater than that. They will betray their friends, be reckless, puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than love God. And I have to end because I can go on and on and on. Um, I want to I want to close with this. God wants us to be ready to prepare. And I th- I think a way to say it is if our hearts have been calloused we've just been a little bit like yeah whatever, you know. Just, it's going to be what it's going to be. People s- say stuff like that. If our hearts have been callous, what we need to ask God is rip our hearts, rend our hearts, uh, tear away the callous that makes us insensitive. Lord, help us to be sensitive again. Rip away that callous so that I can feel the things God wants me to feel, that I can see and discern what God wants me to see so that I can respond because here's the end of this thing is this. If we don't see, if we don't discern the signs of the times, then how can we prepare? Why would we prepare? We'll just continue to live as if, like, like Second Peter told us, like if nothing's ever changed, we won't do anything. And in that, we will not be ready. Let's bow our heads this, this morning. Let's join in a word of prayer. I want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you to pray for a moment with me. Father, in Jesus' precious name, Oh, my king, people of God, I'm asking you. I'm asking you to talk to God. It's a common thing in the days we live in where people come to church and listen to the pastor pray and listen to the other, the leadership pray or others pray. But folks, I am challenging you, cry out. Father, we come before you recognizing the days we live in. We confess to you, Lord God, our sin. We admit, Lord God, that there's a lot of distractions in our life that are hindering our walk with you. And Lord God, we just want to take this moment, Lord, repent and ask you to forgive us of our sin. And Lord, help us to be a people that recognize that everything about our life is in you. The way we are as parents and grandparents and siblings and brothers and sisters. The way we are as employees and employers and the way we are as friends. The way we are as family in Christ and part of our local body, part of the body of Christ. Lord God, we realize that everything we are is a part of, or is in you, Lord. And we're to live the way you've called us to. Oh, Lord, God, help us to ready our minds and ready our hearts to seek you and to hunger and thirst for you and to, be, and to take very seriously the times that we're in, to be ready to serve to be ready to be the end times believers that you've called us to be. Before we close, I I just feel the need to say this. There are some in the body of Christ, maybe online, maybe in this room today. There are some who say, 
man, it's just so overwhelming. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I don't know what to do. I don't know what. It's so overwhelming. And so, so there are some who say that, and in saying that, they make a decision to do nothing. To do nothing. And I'm here to tell you, it's not on your shoulders. It's not. The world is not on your shoulders. It's on his, the Lord's. And his shoulders are big enough to carry it. And while he's carrying it, he's carrying you. All, your, all you and I are called to do is be his in our world, in our part of the world, be his. Love God, love your neighbor, shine the light. Care about souls. Recognize we need salvation. Recognize we can do something. We really can. I want to do this this morning. We're going to um, bring it to a close. If you're in this place today, or those of you online, you're there with us, and you say, you know what, I have never, I, I, I acknowledge God exists, I know he's real, but I've never asked Jesus to be my savior. I have never asked the Lord to save me, forgive me. I have never really understood that, that my sins need to be forgiven, and I need salvation from Jesus. Maybe you're here today or you're online and you're saying, you know what, today is the day. I'm not going to live another day without him. Well, I'm going to pray a prayer. And if that's you, pray this with me. God will hear you. It's between you and him. God will hear you and he'll know that you believe. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you for making me aware and opening my eyes to see that I need Jesus. Lord Jesus, Forgive me of all my sins. Be my Lord and my Savior. Wash me clean. I ask you to make me your child. And from this day forward, I believe in you and I will follow you. Holy Spirit, give me power to live this life for my Lord. I believe in you, Jesus. And I thank you for saving me. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God knows who you are. You know who you are. God knows who you are, and you know who you are. If you prayed that and you meant that, God saw you, he heard you, and you became a believer today. You became a true follower of Christ. And from this day forward, he will be with you and you will walk with him. It won't be a perfect life, but he promises I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always to the end of the age. And the last thing I will mention to those of you who might have given your heart to Jesus today or even rededicated your heart, there's a couple of things you want to do and you want to do them faithfully. Number one, come to church. Number one, come to church. I was taught this a long time ago when I was a new believer. You know, even when you fail, even when you mess up and backslide, just keep coming to church because you'll come, you'll hear the word, you'll feel the presence of God, you'll experience God's conviction, and you'll get right. You won't be able to stand it, you'll get right. But when you don't come to church and you stay away from church longer and longer, your heart gets harder, you get colder, you don't want it anymore. You start going, I don't need it anymore. Next thing you know, you end up in the end times fall away. The other thing is come to church, number one. Number two, and not in this order because you gotta do them all. Number two is pray every day. Seek the Lord, talk to him. I don't know how to pray though. Simple. The way you talk, that's how you pray. Lord, help me. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I don't know what to do. You know, some people think prayer is this. Dear Heavenly Father, 
I come as thou unto you is to, you know, and it has to sound all religious. That's ridiculous. Just talk. Right? Is that how you talk to your wife or your kids? You walk up to your wife and you say, honeyest thou, did you cookest my meal? You know, we don't talk like that. So why talk to God? Talk to him. Come to church. Pray to God. Number three, you know what I'm going to say. Let him talk to you. Amen. Let him talk to you. He'll talk to you in your heart. No question. You'll hear him. But I'm telling you, his word is also his voice. And whatever he says to you in your heart, he will have you confirm it in his word. Read your word each day. But I don't understand it. That's why you come to church. So that when it's preached, you go, oh, man, we were talking about that today. I didn't know what it was. Pastor didn't know, but he preached on it. And oh, man, now I know. Has that ever happened to anyone? That's called the gift of the Spirit, a word of wisdom, word of knowledge. You come to church, you, you get discernment. We got we to gotta go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start another message if we don't, if we don't uh, cut it out here. I want to go ahead and ask the worship team to come on up and the uh, ushers and usherettes. How many of you got something out of today? Did anybody get blessed today? I'm just curious. Amen. Amen. I hope so. Because I, I tell you, what, what people consider a blessing is interesting to me. I think when we hear messages that cut us, like cut us in the heart, we feel convicted. I think those are blessings. I feel blessed when I feel, when I get cut and I feel like, man, God, yes, you convicted me. Come on up, ushers and usherettes. Man, God, you convicted me, man. I felt good. I wanted that conviction. I want to get cut in my heart so I can repent and get right. So for me, that's a blessing. For others, like, oh, I wanted to hear some nice, sweet, uh, the Lord loves me and he's gonna help me with everything and I don't even have, I don't have to do anything hard and I have to just, you know, he's just gonna carry me and I'm gonna float on a cloud. You know, so maybe that's a blessing to you. Well, I'm sorry you didn't get blessed today. But I will encourage you. Walk with God. Take it serious. Go for it. You watch, God will, he, he keeps his promises. Amen. All right. Well, with that, we're going to get ready to, to give and to worship God. We're going to give. As a matter of fact, excuse me for a minute. I left my offering over here. And this is not so that I could get away with not giving it. <laughs> Amen. I just, I'm thankful for the opportunity to give a, an offering. So I'm going to go into that in there now. All right. So, simple. Online, just because you're not here doesn't mean you can't in, give and and, and give into the kingdom. If you're getting blessed, then give. You can text to give, or you can pass by and drop it off on the, on the secure slot there in, in the building, at the building, in the front of the building there. Um, but you can give. Amen. It's between you and God. Don't let anybody guilt you into giving. You just give from your heart. The same goes for us here. Yeah, there are needs here. Yeah. It, the end of the year is always really thin financially. But... I just believe God's people say, you know what? I'm going to put God first. I know Christmas is coming. Some of you are like, what do you mean Christmas? We still got Thanksgiving and Halloween. Halloween not a, Halloween's an outreach, not a holiday. But we, you know, I got to save money to spend on this. I got to go get that big, ugly, scary skeleton and put it in front of my house and, you know, get ready to... Yeah, there are like $200 now. You go to Home Depot and they got these creepy things that look like they came right out of hell. They sound like it too. And we're going to go put that in our front yard. Come on over here, get candy. Oh, and by the way, we're Christians. Really? Dead Christians, because there's a dead person right there in the front of your house. Yeah, we have ways to spend money, but the end of the year always tends to do that. Let it not be for the house of God. Let the people of God say, I'm going to put God first, and God will bless the rest. Amen? He'll bless the rest. All right, with that, you need an offering envelope, lift your hand. Our sisters will get one right to you. You can text to give. Um, and I, I recognize some people don't use envelopes anymore, but if you want to use envelope, you can still. I still use them. I like that. Uh, and uh, I just want to encourage you, invest. We, we did get our new flyers made, our new uh, ministry cards made. They have been printed. So thank you for anyone who might have given towards that. You might have said, you know what? I didn't get a chance to give towards that. Well, Go for it. Give towards it because, you know, uh, we, we do need to continue on to get more materials to share the gospel with others, especially this outreach coming up. We're, we're investing and in making sure that we share the gospel on, on that Halloween day, right? Okay, you guys ready to give?
Wow, that was a big, how, I think I hear more from the camera. You guys ready to give? Yeah, see, they, you know, they went like that. All right, we're going to worship God with our giving. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, that we have to give to you. Lord, we believe with all of our heart that you are our king and our God, and you are worthy of our offering. You didn't just command us to give. You taught us the meaning of it and the beauty of it, of trusting you. So Lord, we ask that you bless this offering for the kingdom's purpose and bless your families, your people who trust you in giving. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Let's give to the Lord. I don't want to lie on somebody else's passion. I don't want to fight me like a shackle. I don't want to burn with a quench of a fire. Deep down inside, see it come in alive. I don't want to ride on somebody else's passion. I don't want to find it. Jesus. And with that, we have some announcements. All right. Amen. Uh, sorry. So, let's see. Today, October 15th, we have uh, birthdays and anniversaries. We're going to be celebrating that. Um, there's a ladies' lunch at 12 p.m. It's going to be at Sizzler. Um, and then it's, there's a $5 donation for the birthday ladies. Uh, please RSVP with Sister Brenda. And then our men, the men's one will uh, be in uh, November, so they got postponed in November for the men for the birthday lunch. Um, October 28th, uh, refined young adults ages 18 to 25. Um, they're gonna be that's gonna be at uh, Firehouse Church with Firehouse Church. They're gonna have a testimony. Yes. It's called uh, Testimonies from How. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Testimonies from How. Yeah. So uh, young adults, you know, try to get plugged into that. Um, October 29th from 12 to 2 p.m. Uh, there's going to be a work day uh, cleaning and getting prepared for the Shine the Light outreach that yes. that's going to be done this year. So if you're able to make it, you know, come out, even if it's just for an hour, 30 minutes, every little bit of help helps. Um, and then October 31st from 6.30 to 8.30, the Shine the Light um, outreach. And uh, it says here, please volunteer if possible. We are also accepting candy donations by the Hub. There's a black trash can out there. It's not a trash can. It's a candy can. So throw some candy in there. <laughs> if you can, that's going to help for us to be able to bless the kids that come, you know, along with ministering to them. Um, and then there's also a tree with light bulbs for any donations that may be brought. So it's on the, the desk up there. Yeah, those are things that we may need. Um, and that's all for the announcements. So. Amen. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks, Drew. Appreciate that. Uh, we're going to close in a word of prayer in the service. And um, uh, from the pastor's heart, myself and Sister Brenda, from our hearts, we put a plea out there. If you did not, if you did not uh, intend to be a part of this outreach, and maybe you just planned on staying home and watching 20 videos about you know, Jason and Friday the 13th and Michael Myers and whatever. I don't even know what's out there today, slashers, whatever. I want to, I just, from the pastor's heart, I want to I put it out there. The more people who get involved, the more gospel we can share, the more people we can touch. The less, like Sister Brenda told me, she said, if I have to sit out there on a chair, right there by the front, and just pass out flyers and share the gospel, if I have to do that, I will do that. 
Because it's not about, you know, a beautiful show. It is about, as a church, we want to touch whoever comes our way with the Lord. So if you didn't make any plans, I want to just, from a pastor's heart, I want to put it out there. Get involved in the outreach. Get involved. Father, we love you. We thank you. And we ask that today, Lord, you'd be glorified in our life. We pray that our ladies' fellowship would be blessed today, that they would edify each other and encourage each other. Father, we also pray that, Lord God, the rest of our day would just bring glory to your name. Lord, help us to be ready. You might bring someone across our path today. Help us to be ready to let them know how much you love them and how they might need you. Gracious God, thank you for this blessing. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Shine the light. Shine the light. Amen.